So now I'm going to talk about how to read a central bank report. Sometimes I assign uh, different kinds of analyses in my international monetary theory class. Um, and sometimes in other classes, I ask people to write their own types of reports. But here, I just kind of go over a country's uh, basically public information. They write up reports and analyze their own economy and the global economy. And briefly, I'm just going to show what to look for. Uh, this this is the uh, Narodowy Bank Polski. It's the, the Polish uh, central bank. Uh, it's an English language report. Um, I picked Poland because, hey, it's Chicago. So uh, now I'm going to kind of talk about what this particular uh, bank does. Uh, different central banks have their own. Uh, it's important to note Poland is not part of the Eurozone. It has its own currency called the Zwari, so that's one reason I picked it. And uh, another another thing is that they are kind of closely connected to the Eurozone just through all the economic equations I talk about in class. So they're they're mostly independent, but sort of tied to the Eurozone. All right. Now this is over 100 pages long. I'm not going to go over it in a whole lot of detail, but I'm going to go over the main points. All right. Um, usually there's some front matter, copyright and stuff. Um, here are the contents. I'm just going to go over exactly what to look for when you look at your own country. Um, usually there's some, uh, sen uh, some summary of economic developments in the country as well in the global economy. A lot of times they'll talk about some of the same sectors you talk about in macroeconomics class. For example, consumption, investment, government spending in the foreign sector. Um, and they'll talk about unemployment rates, inflation rates, and stuff like that. Uh, monetary developments are important for a central bank, especially those that issue their own currency. And then the international sector here gets its own section with the balance of payments, you know, it's current capital and financial accounts. All right. Then they talk about what their um, decision-making body will do. There's a lot of tables in this particular uh, report, a lot of charts, um, but then there's some methodological notes. Now, I don't think this one has it, but sometimes countries will have actual like statistical analyses, like econometric analyses, and they might put those in like some boxes as you go. They're sort of separated out because a lot of times um, the average reader is not interested or trained to understand it, but their economists do economic work and might actually put it in, in a separate section within the text or without. All right. um, so just real quick, they talk about, uh, usually there's some sort of quick summary, right? They start out with gross domestic product, talking about growth rates, 2.8% uh, year year. Now I'm using an older central bank report. It's not 2016 right now. Um, I'm just doing it because I'm kind of trying to keep it sort of timeless, um, but it's a good period of sort of decent growth in the global economy, all right? We're talking about domestic demand. So if you're a student of macroeconomics, you'll realize they're talking about aggregate demand. They're talking about growth rates, talking about a lot of terms you've already seen. Um, Talks about investment, as I mentioned. Um, what else? Uh, talks about manufacturing output and other sectoral output. So they're breaking it down a little further into construction and other sectors. And then here's PPI, which again is price index. Um, and so they're talking about inflation rates, right? 3.2% versus 1.8%, right? Um, and again, they go in a lot more detail than I do in a macro class. Like I'm not looking at, you know, hot water prices or construction indices, but that's something that if you are looking at Poland or whatever country you really care about, um, you would want to know maybe more detail about that. Um, got some graphs, got some, uh, you know, GDP growth and so forth. All right, so it gets into a little bit more detail. So this really digs into... Um, you know, specific sectors of output, specific sectors of prices. Here's the unemployment rate. Um, you can see they've got the dynamics of that over the year. Um, wages and salaries, again, going into the labor market. And so all these things, you know, in intermediate macro, we talk about the, the labor force and uh, different components of, of the price index and so forth. And, and here you, you will see whether you're taking principles or uh, intermediate, international data analysis, whatever class you're taking, you're going to see things that you recognize from class, right? So I'm not going to go over every single detail, but it gives those things that we know, right? It's got things about the budget. It's got things about budget deficits, taxes. Um, you know, it's got things about, you know, different wages and wage sectors. So these are all things that matter for the classes that we teach. So now we move on to monetary developments. And again, being a central bank, we care mostly about interest rates. It has a lot of, uh, you know, different, you know, different, uh, I usually talk about the interest rate, but these are different well, versions of it. Um, but it talks about the monetary policy uh, decision, and they left the interest rates at the level they didn't do a change. They didn't do a hike. They didn't do a cut, which is pretty typical for 2016, which was neither super booming nor super declining. All right. And so then they go on and they got, um, again, different interest rates. Um, you, know, you might study that they're deposit rates, lending rates, mortgage rates, and so forth. Um, and, here's, and then they got the quantity of money. Besides the price of money, here's the quantity. They got M1, which is the narrowest definition of the money supply, and they have a, 
uh, measure of its growth. They also have M3, which is the broadest, and, and most countries don't do, or a lot of countries don't do. All right. So again, they got the price and quantity of money. They got the decision making of the country. Uh, they talk about the credit sector and how much loans are in circulation and so forth. Right. And so that gets at uh, you know basically the the essentials of the banking sector. So again, if you're looking at Poland or whatever country, you'd want to know about what their central bank is doing and why. Now. Uh, important for international macro is balance of payments. All right, talks about the current account, which is much larger than the capital account, breaks it down into exports and imports. Okay, and then it talks about the inflows and outflows of capital. Okay, so that's what you would expect. All right, and then, then just like for the U.S., I use the BEA, the Bureau of Economic Analysis. Here, uh, they have balance of payments broken down into goods and services and, and all the inflows and outflows of capital on the financial side, which is portfolio and direct investment, as well as other investment, which is a lot of loans and stuff. Um, and so they break that down, and they've got it for the year. Now, you wouldn't you wouldn't pull these data and put them in Excel. You'd have to – usually these central banks have their own databases where you can download it, but here's a good sense of what the economies are doing. All right. Financial account, again, talking about uh, portfolio and, and uh, direct investment, both in, in Polish and non-Polish investors. Okay, so we've got the domestic demand, right, and talking about consumption, broken down government and investment. Here's the export-import side, as well as the financial side. Okay, now again, they talked about uh, what the Monetary Policy uh, uh, Council did. All right, so again, the central bank talks about what the central bank chooses to do. And then we move on to statistical annex, right? So again, there's a lot of tables. Um, you can look at corporate performance, uh, uh, other uh, bank performances, interest rates, um, and so forth. Um, a lot of this, again, you'd have to really dig in if you're really interested in the country. So I'm kind of moving fast. Um, this Warsaw Stock Exchange is pretty important. Um, talking about the financial markets. Okay, and then, of course, the international financial market, which is the exchange rates, so the zwadis per dollar, zwadis per euro, and so forth on a daily basis. Okay, so i um, not going to rotate this, but it's got a lot of uh, interest rates on different assets and so forth. Um, so, again, hundred, like, I don't know if it's 100, it's like dozens of pages of data. All right, and you can look at all those sectors, domestic, foreign, and banking, okay? Now we're back to more graphs about some of the things we've talked about, monetary aggregates, inflation, exchange rates, current account, and so forth. So again, this is a heavily statistical analysis. Um, you can really dig deep into this, okay? The last thing I'm gonna talk about is, it gets into sort of the methodology. Um, I'm kind of moving up and down here, and it says, you know, how these things, what, com what comprises each component, how it's uh, calculated. They do have some formulas in here that I can try and find. Um, but it gets, you know, like here, like it actually gets into how these data are, you know, defined and calculated, right? So there's this method section at the end, right? So again, this, this document is 122 pages, you, and a lot of it, besides the, the covers and front matter and stuff, uh, is a lot of statistical analysis. But this gets into exactly what's going on in this particular country, right? Domestic sector, foreign sector, and then um, breaks that down into the things you might have talked about in class, right? Uh, your GDP and prices, uh, labor force, sectors like government and investment, parts of the balance of payments like the current and uh, financial account. But this, this gives you a lot of information to look at, and, and whether you're learning about a country, but it also shows you what's important if you're writing about a country. So if you have to do a report on you know, using sources, uh, you you know what's important to economists and you know what's important to policymakers, right? So this is just one source if you are looking at country developments. You know, you can, you're, but this is directly from the country. It's directly from the central bank. It will help you get a good look at that country and what exact what exact economic indicators are important for that country.